Baruch Hashem, it's the week of Parshas Vayera. And we're going to learn one of the most important Maimarim in all of Chassidus. Uh-huh. Why is it so important? Because this is the first time that I remember in Torah Or that he explains how prayer works, what it means that we need to say something to Hashem. Doesn't Hashem know anyway? What's the value of prayer? What's the value of, uh, of, of, of something happening here that somehow is going to affect Hashem? What does that mean in general that Hashem is affected by the world? Which are some of the greatest questions. And Hasidus has a very, very specific way of answering this. And it's very interesting. I don't think that before Hasidus it was, I've never seen a serious treatment of this question an attempt to even make some kind of scheme of things that would answer it. And it's uh, the closest, I think, is what the Rambam says. The Rambam says, that in a place that there is free will, there's no, uh, there's no knowledge from God's point of view. And in a place where there's no uh, free will, there is knowledge. You know, that free will somehow creates a, a, call it a separation between two realms as it were from Hashem's point of view but that's very uh, very difficult and it's certainly not well developed, maybe you could develop the Rambam much more but I'm not aware of a development that happened afterwards but that doesn't mean there isn't, it just means that I, I haven't seen, in any case in Chassidus this is a very big deal so it starts from the end of the parsha. and the end of the parsha, we, we hear this, uh, this uh, not the end of the parsha, the middle of the parsha. We hear that uh, Sodom and Amora are, are, are very sinful. And Hashem says, I will descend to see, is it, as it sounds, <laughs> the way that the cry <laughs> sounds. <laughs> so what is this? Kitzakata has become a, a, a term in Hebrew that means um, the way it's, uh, the way it's uh, publicized. <laughs> <laughs> it's fake news. <laughs> okay, is it fake news or real news? That's what it means like in modern Hebrew, but it, not just in modern Hebrew, it's, it's a very interesting word. Kitzakata. <laughs> is it the way that it sounds? Is it what it sounds like? But here, like Hashem is saying, I have to descend in order to hear, or to, in order to verify, to see whether it's the way that I, that I think that it is. He doesn't know. He doesn't know how it is. That's a question about Hashem's knowledge. Why would Hashem have to do anything in order to, to verify? If you would say, Hashem heard the cry of, of Sodom, of this terrible city, of the inhabitants there. You heard how terrible it was there. And he decided to ju- judge them, I would understand. But he says, I have to go and verify to see whether it's really that way. Of the doubt. What doubt? There's no doubt. I don't understand, but like... So uh, what's going on? To teach, so us to, give, to, to teach us to give people the benefit of the doubt. T- teaching the Dani, this is how you need to verify what you hear as testimony. Okay, say them. But still, the Torah describes it as Hashem doing something. What does that even mean that He well, did that? Of times the Torah describes Hashem as doing something. You said so. So what does that even Torah mean? Is written. Torah is written. Okay. So, so um, what does the Torah want to tell us? So you could say it's just to teach us another halacha, in general, by the court. How the court, a human court, has to has to well, has to conduct court. itself. Yeah. I think the Ramban built this question over here as well. So I think yeah. for whatever reason. They chose, you're right, they could have dealt with this question pretty much anywhere, but for some reason, they dealt with it here. Okay. So it's let's... here because the behavior was so gross, and you could have said that there was nothing to talk about here. Other places, given the benefit of the doubt, the doubt nevertheless, it's still good about checking it. But that's, 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 that's all that's relevant that's to the Dayanim. Yeah. But why is the, no, why is the Shem just... Well. Well? No, no, that's relevant to, as a lesson for us. Yeah. But you could say that lesson in another place and say that even though Moshe Rabbeinu knew 100% what had happened, tell a story. 
he knew exactly what happened, and yet still he came and he wanted to test the testimonies to make sure that it was right. To say about Hashem that he has to descend in order to see whether it's as advertised. He built the world. He can do it in any way he wants. That's the way he wants. 100%. That's the way he wants to do it. That's the way he wants to do it. He said it. So what's the verse? The verse is, Okay. So what do we have here? Hakitzakata is feminine. Is her cry. Is her cry. The, seemingly the city of Sodom, her cry. Habailai, that the sound of the cry is feminine, it came to me. The sound of her cry that has come to me. Asu, they have committed. They've done, which becomes both male and female. It says there's a switch here in the middle. I say no, this is not, this is just to explain the basics here. וגם להבין מהו ארדנה וירא, הלא משמיים הביט השם. What does it mean? Hashem has to descend in order to see. Hashem sees from the heavens, meaning from outside reality. אך פירוש הקצעקתה, היינו הצעקה העולה מבחינת מידת הדין. So it's not from the city of Sodom, it's from the measure of judgment in the world which is described as feminine. שהיא בחינת מידת מלכות שנקראת דין, דינא דמלכות דינא. So he says, first of all, you should know that the din in the world is, is a measurement. It measures the world all the time. Just as like there's a law of gravitation, there's a law of din, of judgment. And the judgment is constantly judging, measuring how things are going. And it's related to the sphere of Malchus, and it's called Dina de Malchuta Dina. And it's called the judgment of Malchus. And the judgment of Malchus is a judgment. That's a, what it comes to say. Literally, this means in, in Halacha that whatever uh, country you're, you're living in, you have to follow the laws of that country. Because the laws of a sovereign are laws. The Torah recognizes them as laws because if there were no laws, it would be chaos. Unless they're in, in direct. Okay, yeah, when they're in direct contradiction to the, to the Torah, that's, that's a different issue. But in general, first of all, they have validity. Yeah, no, no. There's a, the whole question, the Ran has a whole shita, that in Eretz Yisrael there's no dina de mechuta dina. That in Eretz Yisrael, if there's a sovereign who doesn't do things according to Torah, his, all his laws are nullified anyway. They don't have validity to begin with. No, not, not just if he does it, sorry, I said it wrong. Not, not only if it's against the Torah. In any case, they have no validity. Only the laws of the Torah have validity in Eretz Yisrael. That's, but there's only one, one Rishon that says this, the Ran. <laughs> and I'm not aware of anyone. The Ran. Rabbeinu Nisim. Rabbeinu Nisim. Where? 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 Where do you say? In Sanhedrin. We talked about Dina Nukhuta Dina. Rakshu Dina Rafia. This is called a weak din. It's a weak, weak form of judgment. The, the judgment that's built into the world is called Dina Rafia. Where do we have Dina Rafia and Dina Kasha? We have them in Rosh Hashanah. The first day is Dina Kasha, because that's from Hashem, as it were. And the second day is Dina Rafia. It's, it's a weaker din. So here he explains it's a weaker din because, it's, as it were, it's a law in, the, in, in reality. It's not something that Hashem does at this moment. It's like a law he said in motion. מלך במשפט יעמיד ארץ. וזהו שכתוב, הקצעקתה הבאה, כמו שכתוב, בערב היא באה, ורחל באה. So, where did this cry come from? It came from the measurement of judgment that's built into the world. And it's called Dina Rafia. And it's the din that is described by the Pasuk, a king with judgment sustains his country. Meaning that every din, every, every king has to have some form of government, some kind of governance built into the, otherwise he's not a king. Mm -hmm. So that's like something almost technical. Or you would say almost automatic, without, you don't need to think too much. There's laws. These laws are supposed to be upheld. And they're what hold a country together. And that's 
to Hashem. Okay. To understand this, what are we talking about? What in the world is this? So, we have to, first of all, recognize the language that the sages use. What they say, it is clear, sorry, it, it, is, is, it, it is revealed, and it is known to he who created the world. What is this galui ve'adua daika? What does it mean that it's revealed and known? If it's revealed, it's known. If it's known, it's revealed. Why, why do you have to use these two words? And this is a, an, an idiom that the sages use many times in, this, in the Gemara. Because the philosophers could not understand the issue of personal individual providence. Philosophers, you're talking about Aristotle. It's a non-Jewish concept. It's a non-Jewish concept. Not just the philosophers. The Goy can understand. No, but a lot of you describe this. Uh, Today they understand. Today they mamish believe that Hashem is. Uh, they believe in Hashem. They don't believe in Hashem. Ah, that, that was even by the Oyv the Avoid Zara. Even those who were idol worshippers believed that there was a God above. But not that there's. The okay. So one of the things that the that the Baal Shem Tov said that he was able to affect the world was that every Gentile from the time of the Baal Shem Tov, he says it, it permeated their thought believes now in, in, in individual providence he said that in that I was successful in the he idea everybody believes yeah. this everybody feels that everything that they do is being watched okay. he said there was another of my principles that I wasn't able to to uh, permeate into no, the world. Being watched is not a scrap of process. I personally am being watched and I am being. Pro- being I, there's providence over me. Being 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 Everything being that happens to me has a, has a, has a meaning. A reason. Yeah. A reason. That, that he, and, he, and there was a famous story that uh, one of the ministers came in, something like that, and he said to him, uh, and he came, he came disguised, but the Alter Rebbe, when he was in jail, yeah, yeah, yeah. so he, he stood stood recognized who he was, Sorry? and he stood up for him, and he said, uh, and he told him that when a person reaches the age of 50, it was 50 it was that Tsar. day. What? It was the Tsar. Tsar. I don't know if it was the Tsar himself. So. It was, it was the Tsar. So. Yeah, yeah. 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 so a person reaches the age of 50, 54. and he has to hear the, the call of Hashem, Ayeka which was not just said to Adam Marisha, and it was not just said to the first man, it said to every person, and now Hashem is calling out to every person at every moment, where are you, what are you doing? And he was very taken aback that he could see this. And, uh, so, so, and he released him out of jail as a result. Maybe. I don't know why. <laughs> That's how the story him. goes. Could be. Um, but by the way, Sodom and Gomorrah, they, they had rules, they had laws. They did but there was no concept of Hashgacha Pratis. Meaning what he's saying is that by idolaters and by philosophers who distance Hashem outside of the world, there can't be individual providence. And unfortunately, a lot of people understand that that's what the, that's what the Rambam is saying. Because the Rambam is very affected by philosophy. So it's like some people understand that. I don't think that's what he's saying at all. But that's a different issue. We're not going to analyze the Rambam now. So this concept of individual providence is beyond philosophy. I just wanted to add one thing, it was very interesting, that this, the, the Baal Shem Tov said he was able to change. That before he came into the world, people didn't believe fully in, the, in, the, in personal providence. He said, this I was able to instill into the world. But there's another principle of mine that I wasn't able to, that will come at some point, and that's the idea that the world is recreated at every moment. So that's, that, that was beyond people. They couldn't, they couldn't get it. Even this Talmudim couldn't, couldn't explain it well enough. What's well, happening now in the, in the, in the Andrews world? They talk about neuroplasticity and the ability of... So it's, it's, it's coming, coming in. Could be, though, come from a different direction. But he said that was another one of my principles that I tried. I said, I said that if these two principles would have been uh, accepted then, Mashiach could have come right away. Two principles that re, that Mashiach requires. 
that the Mashiach consciousness is built on. In any case, go, going from back the Jews to, or from uh, by, by the whole world. He, he was he stressed that this was accepted by everybody. It's not a goy who doesn't believe now in divine in divine personal providence. He can he can uh, <laughs> he can shun it. He can decide I don't believe in God at all. But if he believes in God, God is already with personal providence. Mm-hmm. It's built into the definition. So, again, sometimes if a person faces calamity, like a psychologist, so people take on a lot of guilt. So, so, so they, they did something that caused somebody pain or even to die or whatever it is. And people walk around with a lot of guilt and it ruins their lives. So modern Western psychologists have no, can't use God as a, they can't use Ashgacha Pratis as a, as a method of, of, of helping somebody, which is very unfortunate. Because what's the real answer? The real answer is you're not Balabite here. You were the agent. It's also Ashgacha Pratis. It's also Ashgacha Pratis. That's all Chaliyah. That's one of the big principles. Of, that's one of the that's one of the corollaries that comes out of Vishgacha Pratis. I, you decided what you did to do what you did, but Hashem has deeper thoughts. And even if he, if He allowed you to sin, meaning if He allowed it, there's a, there's a there's a final good that will come out of this. And He, in His wisdom, He knows how to how to play the chess game so that it works out. You you made your choice. That's a, that's the famous example from Buga. That's Buber's example, which is very deep. Um, I once read a, an, art, a, a, an essay that Rev Ginsburg wrote when he was in college, and he debunked Buber's understanding based on something in Chassidus. I don't remember what he wrote. I remember that it was like he didn't like the example of, uh, of a chess game. I don't remember what, what, what he said there. In any case. Because a person cannot move his finger below if it's not declared and decreed from above. So we talked about this once last year, that free will does not move my fingers. Free will moves my thoughts. But to get from my thought to my finger requires a whole path, a neural path, which is decreed from above, meaning it's, it's, not, it's nothing that 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 um, that instantaneously guarantees that the fact that you'll think of moving your finger will make your finger actually right. move, because a person, God forbid, he can be paralyzed, or suddenly his finger doesn't work, or suddenly his finger is crushed. Who knows what? There's no guarantee that I the fact that I can will it, that it will, will also create the. So, that, so that's one of the simple explanations, in my opinion, the best explanation, of what it means that, that, that everything is declared from above. And still there's free will. Because the free will is only in my mind. It's not, it doesn't go, it doesn't extend in my body beyond. And, that, and even though it seems instantaneous to me that I want to move my finger and my finger moves, there's no guarantee that it will. <clears throat> to put it another way, <clears throat> when, the, when the soul doesn't have a body, it can certainly will to move its fingers. It has a concept of a finger because the soul is created in God's image as well. And God's image is like the form of the human. It has fingers, it has everything. They're just spiritual. They're not in this physical form. So the soul can move its fingers all the time, but it's not in this physical world. And that's what it means that it's decreed above that here below he'll have the ability to actually move something physical. There's a there's a, a thing uh, you know that uh, they call the Ouija board, something like that. Ouija, Ouija, Ouija. Ouija. Good, it's also it's all the whole thing. Well, what's the idea there? They use the concept. It's a very simple concept. They say the soul wants to communicate, but it doesn't have any physical appendages, so it can't it can't communicate with you. It can't speak. It can't talk, and so on. So we'll move it for it. <laughs> So we'll use some kind of something that's very, very delicate, and that's enough for the soul. What's going to happen? It's going to move it through our thoughts or something, something else. It's going to enter into our thoughts. And that's also because what you're doing is you're shoel el because you're asking the dead to answer to it. It's not also because of the act itself. It's because it's this whole thing of, what are you asking dead people about what the reality is? The, the, the dead, what? the dead soul moves the item. 
I mean, for people that have seen it, it's it's also it's, it's not because it, so it's, so it's really the Rambam would say it's all nonsense. The Ramban would say no, this is real. He's just not allowed to do it because Hashem said don't do it. Rashi would say that's how you want to live. No, it doesn't matter whether it's real or not. That's how you want to live. You want to ask your questions to somebody dead. Ask yeah, somebody alive. <laughs> that's what they say. In any case. But hang on a second. Well, Rabbaim, Rabbaim, Rashi, Rashi Rabbaim talk they, they about talk it all the time. They talk to them all the time. They just don't use this. Excuse me, right. excuse me. Right. Rashi right. definitely makes it also. Rashi Chumash. He says, don't ask about the future. No, he says, you the know, I have to say, because my past here, this is, yeah. No, obviously, that, uh, is, uh, that I understand 100%. Of course, no, it's Asr. He doesn't say it's not Asr. He's just saying, the point is, not that it's yeah, Asr. The point is, you, this is not how you live with Hashem. Hashem. If you want to live with Hashem, be Tummy. Why are you even asking about the future? Why are you even asking these questions? You're not the way a person should live his life. And that's what he writes in Tamim Tiyay Meshem Rokech in Vayikra. He says, if you want to be with Hashem, you should be sincere and, and simple in your conduct. You don't have to try to second guess what's going on every, every, every moment. Okay, in any case, so everything is everything is, comes from above, from Hashem. And Hashem so the philosophers say, since everything comes from God, how could God be expected to put his mind into every single detail? He's overwhelmed. Yeah, it's oh, too much. Too much for him. He's, he's maxed out. He only has, he, he only has the capacity of making everything, not controlling only, everything. God only has 64 no, gigabytes. He right, doesn't, right. doesn't have. So that's one option. The other option is what the Zohar says, and what's quoted many times in Chassidus, it's not the way of a king to go micromanage his kingdom. It doesn't Idiots. make any sense. It doesn't, it's not how you work. Jimmy if Carter you're a king... Syndrome. Jimmy Carter Syndrome. What? Jimmy Carter Syndrome. Why you micromanage? When Jimmy Carter was president of the United States, yeah. he had to sign everything. If you wanted to go really? rent out the tennis court in the afternoon, he had to sign it. And his whole, what do you call it, his whole uh, administration? administration fell to pieces. Because he wouldn't let anybody do anything unless he signed it. Okay. She goes off the counter. This is that you can't, you can't run a world. The less that he did, the better. The less that he did, the better. That's right. But that's yeah, going back to the, to the 64 gigabyte uh, yeah, He analogy. came to the river for Brocco for a second. What do you call it? Yeah. The river said no. no. That's why he hates the Jews. That's why he said no. He actually said no to him? Yeah. So he refused. He asked her if he could come to him. Went to the broker for a second cadence here, and I never said no. I think he was one of the uh, two uh, presidents ever not to win a second term. No, no there's many more. Plenty more. Many more? Yeah. A lot of presidents. Nixon? <laughs> Just before him. And then Ford also, which, who took. Uh-huh. Ford, Henry Ford. No, no, it wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't Henry Ford. What was his uh, first name? I forgot. Gerald. Gerald Ford. Thanks. Um, Henry made other things. What, what he just said is the 64 gigabyte uh, argument, which is you can't run an administration if you micromanage. What the Tsar is saying, what the Sidus quotes, is that it's not the way of a king. I mean, it's not according to his oh, honor. Sure. It's, not, it's not how a king conducts himself. You're a king, you sit here, and you delegate. That shows that you're a king. If you have to micromanage, you're not a king. What kind of a king has to, has to go and see if they're actually doing what I said? So that makes sense. That's what the philosophers said. But it's a, it's a stick with two sh- sharp ends. On mm-hmm. the one hand, you want to be a king. That's the way you want to be perceived. On the yeah. other hand, you want to be the hands-on manager because you care about your flock. So now we have, that's why there have to be two states. Right. But the normal state is like what the philosophers right. said. The philosophers are right. The way that Hashem would conduct the world on a normal day is, I delegate. When I was in rabbinical training, uh, we'll, be risking, we'll continue tomorrow. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. He came 